Hi everybody, Alex Deployer from Expert Forex and in today's video, which is an exciting one, I am going to show you the latest upgrade that has been made on the RSI Liberator EA that has brought it into a version 3. We number the versions by the seriousness of the upgrade and when it is a new number with zeros behind it, it means it's a major upgrade. Minor upgrades would have, for instance, 3.1 behind them. So let's have a look at what has happened. So today we're going to be reviewing the hedging function. Now the hedging function has been in the EA for a very long time. And I noticed that traders are not using it. So I'm going to show you the hedging function. It's very important. It can really reduce the number of open trades in the wrong direction tremendously. And it is not part of the upgrade. It's been there all the time. So let, what is part of the upgrade? So let's go down the list here. Firstly, there's a pruning function based on balanced closure. I'll explain all that later. Then there's a pruning function based on the first and last transactions. Then there's a gap closure function, uh, which is also a pruning function. And then we're going to look at a new trading plan presentation that is available for the EA. Very exciting, this particular one. Then we have a setting pairs to get out of. If you don't want to trade a particular pair, just tell the EA and it will not trade that pair. And uh, then there's a top up uh, that, that can be made now on fixed lots. And then there's a new one where the initial lot sizing will be adjusted according to the equity level. So quite an exciting time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you most of those on trading charts so that you can see them live. And just a reminder that you can purchase the RSI at 80% off if you buy it in a bundle and if you already own any of these EAs in this bundle, you can buy the rest of them for 80% off. So here I am on the EA Factory website and here's my personal website page and if you have bought the RSI Liberator, you will be able to click here to download it. So what I'm going to do, you can see all the other products available, but I'm going to click here to download it. And there's a little bit about the EA itself, but here's the important part. Uh, you'll see this is grayed out until you accept all the terms and conditions. And we click here and we say, yes, we do. And now we can look at what is available to you. Now, firstly, the user guide. We will look Look at that user guide because it's very important. We get a lot of help desk queries and a lot of comments in the, car, in, the in the forum where clearly traders just do not read the user manual. The user manual has fantastic examples and explanations of every setting. So here's where you download the user manual. That is where you download the EA. Even when you've just bought the EA or whether you're an existing client that wants to upgrade, that is where you download the EA setup file. So this is not the EA itself. It's a setup file that, that takes you through the process of installing the EA. Then there's some more information available. There is a link that you can click to that shows you how the process of downloading it and installing the EA. So all the information is there, the fantastic database. Uh, then there's an upgrade EA. Again, click on that link. If you're upgrading, follow the process that is stated in that particular link to help you with the upgrade process. Then there is the change log area and that basically lists all the changes that have made in the various updates. And I'll just click on that particular one to give you an idea. And there we are, there are the up, uh, upgrade uh, changes that have been made. This, this upgrade, as you can see, has already been out for a, a day or two. So I'm going to just quickly show you the user guide. And here's the RSI Liberator user guide. And there are, uh, you, you can see that it's a 138 page document. Now, don't get overwhelmed by it because it has a very detailed index. So let's go and have a look at that index. And, and here are the contents. So I'm going to, let's say I'm looking for the pruning. I want information about the pruning settings. So I just go down, down the index. I'll go down until I see pruning. And uh, oh, there you are, pruning, 
pruning of trades. Okay, so now I want to go there. All I do is I click on that heading and it takes me to the pruning of trade. There are the settings. It starts discussing the settings. It gives a huge a number of examples on every setting. And it makes you aware of setting alternatives that you didn't know. Like a lot of traders don't know you can put negative settings in on positive settings and that kind of thing. So this user manual is absolutely gold. Very few traders use it, but it gives you a lot of trading ideas and people don't realize it. Like the one I'm going to show you pretty soon, the one where there is already a hedging function that nobody uses. So please download this user manual and make use of it. If you get stuck with anything, first refer to the user manual, then, then use the, all the other means of resolving your problem like the forum and contacting EA Factory directly. Okay, so let's go and have a look at this fantastic hedging function that nobody uses and can really help you in all kinds of market conditions. Now to show you these transactions, I'm going to be using the strategy tester in visual mode and so that we can actually see the trades as they happen. And let's go and have a look at the settings. And the first setting I'm going to go and look for is the hedging one. So there is the a new Liberator version uh, 3 and it, when we go down these settings here we will see a setting called Hedge Trades Management and it says allow buy and sells of the same pair. So if we do, a, so the options is a drop down menu is only one direction and buy and sell in of the same pair. So that's allowed. Again, this has been in the EA for a long time. People don't realize it. So I'm setting that and uh, and let's just go and see what happens when I set that. So we say, OK, I'm just going to run it on the Aussie yen, a problematic currency in the in the last few uh, weeks. And then we're running it on every tick. And I'm only going to run it for a short period from the 1st of April to more or less uh, last week. Uh, uh, and the reason for that is that this is just for display purposes and uh, we're running with a spread of one and we're running on the period of 15. 15 is very very important uh, if you want slow slow signals you use four hours if you want fast signals you use 15 minutes and uh, and that's what I'm using today and we're using tick data so let's start So there's the trading started. You can see it has started with a buy transaction. And I'm just going to slow it down a little bit. There's, there's a buy. So the RSI must probably had a hook there. And I see the RSI isn't shown, but it, it, it must have had a hook there that resulted in a buy transaction. So it's opened a buy transaction. And let me get rid of the grid. And that makes it a little bit clearer. Then we, all right, while we're here, I'm going to show you one of the other upgrades that we've done. And that upgrade is in the information section of the EA. We have added a trading plan. There's the trading plan. And the idea of this is to warn traders what is coming up. So what we do is we give you a view of the, of the next possible two trades that might happen if the price continues so for instance there we've opened a buy it says there Aussie yen buy the initial trade was opened at a, a gap size of 40 that's the setting I'm using then you, they say all right for the next trade the upcoming trade the gap size is going to increase to 44 because that's a, a multiplier effect that I've built in and the lot sizing is going to go from 0.1 to 1.2 so it is warning traders what is coming up and it's very important that you watch this so that you don't experience unexpected trades then it says okay this that's the upcoming one but the next one subsequent to that one will have a lot size of 0 0.0 0 0.14 and a gap size of 48.4 so the the whole idea of the trading plan is to warn traders what's coming up and that is quite a big part of the upgrade that's happened i'm pleased i'm covering this right now We'll see it in action a little bit, a bit more as we go through this video. So let's continue with this one. The other thing that I must point out, that this buy has been opened. There is the target for the buy. So the, these 
lines are pretty important because they are the target lines and it is still trading away i'm going to just accelerate a bit oops okay there we are so now we have opened a cell so that because there was an rsi signal it came up turned and created a hook on the rsi and there there is a valid sell signal so because we've used the, the you can trade in both ways it will trade independently it will look for buy signals and look for sell signals so there's a valid sell signal and there is the target for that sell signal and there's the blue line over there so what we really have here is a nice hedge where if it goes up it will be positive if it goes down it will be positive so let's just accelerate it a little bit more okay so there we are there we are so the sell has now cashed in initial hidden closure $19 so uh, the EA also allows you to hide your targets from your broker and that's what's happened there and uh, and this basically i'm just going to let it go one more okay there we are and uh, a year it's happened again there there's a buy signal so it's got two buys and one sell at the moment and there we see it two buys and one sell and then in the trading plan it says for your sells this is what will happen for your buys this is what would happen so the trading plan is fantastic and the hedging function is also quite interesting and uh, there we go so that is how the hedging function works the hedging function basically says if i see a valid sell signal i'm going to take it if i see a valid buy signal i'm going to take it for the initial trades as simple as that and as you can see it does hedge it will hedge even in a trend if there's a slightest re retracement it will hedge very powerful a lot in in a certain way this is actually more powerful the hedging ea because the hedging ea uses a fixed method of hedging whereas this is based on true trading signal okay so what have we done we've now looked at the hedging function which isn't even part of the upgrade but we have had a look at the trading plan presentation which is that powerful tool that tells you what's coming allows you to look into the future what can you do if you want to change the future remember any changes to the settings will affect trades into the future so you so if you see all oh, the gap size is too small you just change your uh, multiplier you change your gap size setting if you find the, the the lot sizing is too big then you just change those settings so it gives you an opportunity to manage your trading okay so next on the list is uh, a pruning function based on the balanced exit okay so to use the balanced exit setting let's go and have a look at what we need to do so we go down here we just use all the other standard ones and we go down to the pruning section and there is the pruning section for trades and we say that we want to start the pruning after there's been four open trades in the same direction and that will become clearer as as you look at the example so there i'm going to put a setting of four and then we want what kind of pruning approach do you want so let's kind of have a look at the drop down we go down and we say no we want the balanced pruning effect and, I, and i'll explain how that works when you see the example and uh, then let's not worry about the gap one right now in fact let's make it big so that it doesn't interfere with this example all right and the other thing i'm going to do change i'm going to make i'm going to say let's just keep things simple and only trade in one direction so that the example is a lot simpler okay so away we go we say okay and we start our trade our trading okay so here's the trading happening it's now in a cell there's the target for the cell uh, it's now in another cell let's make it a bit smaller so we've got one cell we've got two cells we've got three cells and we have four cells so i'm going to just stop this so what has happened is we've told the ea to to go into a balanced pruning uh, strategy after four open trades so now those conditions are met there are one two three four open trades here is the traditional target that 
is set for the normal profit retriever process. If the price comes down there, it will close at a profit. But let's uh, now continue based on uh, the balanced pruning process. And I'm going to just increase it a bit. Okay, let's stop right there. Okay, so what has happened here is the pruning has happened. So it has closed the, the, the last transaction because that has traveled by the size of the last grid. So that's the last grid size. It's traveled down, cashed in positively there. And then it says, all right, what I'm going to do now, we have a nice profit from this transaction. I'm going to look for a loss transaction that is more or less the same size or slightly smaller. So what it did is it went down and found one. It could be any of these transactions. It's found there. So what it's saying is, all right, we're closing these two transactions at a small profit. Fantastic. So it's a balanced pruning level has been reached at a profit of $19. So that's how the balanced pruning happens. It goes and looks for a, a matching uh, a transaction. If it can't find one that results in a profit, it will go for a small loss. But it tries to balance it at the same time. Now, so what we what's happened too is it's gone from four open trades down to two open trades. So now the balancing pruning won't work anymore because there aren't four open trades anymore. So the normal profit retrieval process will take over now. And there, that blue line over there is actually the closure line now. So it's actually moved away from where it was and it's gone a little bit. So the tr price has to actually travel a little bit more to reach the closure line. One of the disadvantages of using pruning, but you do pruning for safety of big trends. Also, here is the um, uh, tra uh, trading plan. It tells you you've got four trades open. The next one will be at that gap size and that lot size and the one after that will be at that lot size and that gap size. Okay, we're slowly working through our, our, our list here and we have now covered pruning function on a balanced basis. If you need more information about the pruning function, you know where to go, the user manual. And that will also have a number of additional examples to what I've shown you here. So our next one is pruning function first and last. So let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so to do the first and last transaction pruning, what you do is you do exactly what I did previously, except on the drop-down menu here, we do the drop-down menu and you just select first and last. And let's go and do that. It's exactly the same example using the first and last. Okay, so we're using the same trading process. Here we go. Won't worry about those transactions at, at the moment. Remember what we're waiting for are four open trades uh, in any direction, uh, either sell or buy. So now there are two open sells. There are now three open cells and now there are four open cells. So I'm just going to pause this. So we've met the conditions that uh, that we've set is that after four open cells, the pruning first and last process must happen. So let's just go and activate it again. Oh, there we are. It's happened. So what it has done now, it has closed the last trade at a nice profit. And then it's gone to the very first trade that's open, the, the very first cell that was open and just closed it. No evaluation whatsoever. And what then happened was there was a small loss created because of that. And that is quite normal when you use the first and last. You're basically trying to get the first transaction closed because that's the one that's going to create huge problems in a trend. The first transaction always builds up a big loss and that's the one you want to close first. And that is why that is probably the most effective pruning method that you can use by closing the transaction that is the furthest away from the price action. Now again the, uh, the the trades have gone from four open trades to 
to two open trades and when it's when it's two open trades then the normal profit retrieval process occurs and as you can see again there was the target before but then it, then the closure happened and the target went down there and there it is it's almost at the target to close the in the normal way so that, and which it did so there it closed the other two trades and now you can see there are zero open trades now because a a signal has not been reached there it has just opened a sell transaction there so that covers the first and last pruning process okay we're working our way down this list that's the first and last so now we're going to look at the gap closure function which is quite an unusual one and one that you would only use in an extremely strong trend so how do I set the gap closure function up I go into the settings and I say okay at what gap size do I want any retracement that is made that is 50% of the gap size to be closed? Now, the idea behind this one is that in a strong trend, the gap sizes will just increase and increase and cr increase to the point that it is unlikely that they will move all the way back to their previous opening point where the, the top gap size will be pretty huge. So we say, okay. In that case, let's close 50% and see what happens. If it goes up, it will just open the same trade. If it goes down, it will be in line with what's already happening. So it's a way of saying, look, I'd rather cash in at 50% retracement than wonder whether there will, there will ever be a retracement. The other advantage, as you will see, is that this approach can result in the same transaction repeating itself over and over again. Okay, so how do we set the gap setting up? And what we do, the first thing you want to look at is what is the gap size? And it's at the, at there it's 40. So let's say, just for the example, uh, uh, I want to set that up when that gap size is 48. So I would go down to the settings, gap pruning. So 48 is 120 percent of 40 so we put in 100, uh, uh, 120 so whenever the gap price becomes 48 we want to start using the gap pruning process so let's have a look at that we click that and we say start Okay, we're starting the trading and, and now this is where the trading plan comes in handy. We're looking for a situation where the gap size is bigger than 48. So I'm just watching this section. I'm not even watching the trading. I'm watching that section and uh, we've now got a, a gap size of 40. Uh, oh, there we go. We've now got a gap size of 44 and now we've got one that's over 48. So I'm going to stop the trading. And what happens now is it's met the conditions, it's over 48. And so when there's a retracement of 50% from the previous gap level, grid level, it will cash in. So let's look at that and I'm going to slow the trading down a little bit and away it goes. So there we are, it's trading now, it's met all the conditions. I'm going to just accelerate it a little bit. Okay, so, so it's happened another one. The gap size is now 50. So it's more than, than met the conditions. And, um, and the gap size, you can see there's the grid and there's a grid. So, the, so when it reaches about that level, it should catch, cash in. So let's see what happens. Okay, so there's, there's what's happened. So it's just a single transaction cash in it's it basically it says cash in the last transaction when the last transaction becomes 50 percent positive positive and there's exactly what's happened it's cashed it in so it's a way of getting rid of some transactions the pruning process and now what happens now is that the new target has now changed from being there to down there so the price has to reach there now to cash in all the other open trades but at the so let's just move on and see what happens next
So here's the interesting point. So so we've cashed that transaction in at fifth, and now it's gone back to that level and opened and the exact same transaction. So basically we've made a bonus of that that section. And let's have a look if it cashes in. Because now it qualifies again uh, uh, as uh, because the gap sizing is 53. Now it's gone to 50. Uh, there we are. There's a gap pruning. Okay. And there, there's another. Oh, there's another. Gap. Now I think the point of this example is that you can cash in the same transaction over and over again. So here you can see uh, both these transactions have cashed in twice already. So there's one and there's one. And then there's one and there's one. So the transactions can repeat themselves over. And so although you're only cashing in 50%, you could end up 200% because the transactions repeat. But the big point here is I think you've got a good feel of how the gap pruning works it's really to reduce any uh, of the top transactions in a trend so any the slightest retracement you cash in at 50 percent the slightest 50 percent and that can occur over and over again okay so now we have covered the gap closure function we've also covered the trading plan and you can see how important the trading plan is in the, the trading the next settings are actually quite easy nothing to show you much uh, and I'll just show you how to make those particular sets. so we're going to do the pair to get out of we're going to do the top up by fixed lots and we're going to have the initial lot equity adjustment I'll show you quickly how to do those in the settings so let's have a look at the settings so uh, the first one is is um, currencies to get out of yeah at, at the moment because of this example I've only got one currency that I'm trading pairs to trade so there's a pairs to trade and here you can list as many pairs as you want you can list 28 pairs if you want um, then pairs to get out of now how pairs to get out of means it means that Firstly, you don't want those pairs to trade. So you, you would list the pairs that you don't want to trade. But if you have open trades, and this is very important for you to understand, if you have open trades and you don't want to re-enter that particular currency, then you, you also put that currency in there. Because what it will do, it will continue managing the open trades for the Aussie Yen, for instance. But the minute it closes the Aussie Yen, it will never open another Aussie Yen if you've got that currency in that setting. That's how the setting works. It does not stop you the normal trading of open trades. It does not stop. It doesn't inf interfere with the logic. You can't stop uh, the trades from opening on the Aussie Yen in the future. If you want to do that kind of thing, what you do is you set the gap size to a thousand pips and, and then it will never reach a point where it needs to open new trades. But um, this one is quite handy in that it allows you to close all your trades, let get them pruned, 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 right down to, down to a few and then let it be closed and it will not open other trades. So the next new setting is the top up lots change by lot. So in other words, if your, your initial lot size setting is 0.1 such as in this example uh, you can use either the multiplier or the fixed lot system so in other words the multiplier will multiply it at uh, as the setting is here at basically an increase of 20 percent at a time so the so the 0, 0 0.1 might be might go to 0 one two and then oh one four but then it will jump because it's a multiplier it might jump uh, further so it's 20 percent of the previous one the fixed lot says just increase the initial lot sizing by a fixed amount so what you could put in there is let's say 0 0.05 and instead of multiplying it will just stay fixed so that's how that setting works pretty easy to understand that one and certain traders 
regard that as more conservative because it's not increasing at a big rate and, a, and it's also increasing at a more manageable rate. Then the last change that we've made is the uh, uh, initial lot adjustment based on equity level. So here there are two options. Uh, you can either use if the equity has changed by a certain percentage or you can use an amount. So you can actually specify an amount that you want the EA to start changing the initial lot. So if it goes up 30%, uh, then the initial lot sizing will go up 30%. If you use the, uh, the um, required equity change method, then, then you can specify the lot size adjustment. So in other words, it, it might go up 50%, but you say, okay, I only want to increase my uh, initial lot size by 30%, which is most probably a, a more conservative way of increasing your lots. But for more information about all of these settings, please refer to the user manual and refer to the examples in the user manual. Then just a reminder that you can purchase the RSI at 80% off if you buy it in a bundle and if you already own any of these EAs in this bundle you can buy the rest of them for 80% off. Now I hope you find the changes that have been made and even the hedging function that you might not know about very interesting. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As I said earlier don't hesitate to refer to the user manual if you need more information and hopefully these changes will help you enjoy the RSI Liberator EA as it's supposed to be enjoyed. Very soon the exactly the same upgrades will happen to the Wave Liberator. I might not make a detailed video about that particular one because the same logic applies to will apply to that one Ex and exactly the hedging function would also apply and all the other changes. That isn't anticipated in the next couple of days. So from me Alex Deploy, thanks for watching this video and cheerio.